Next, we will have our guest speaker, Prof. Ryan Blumthal. He's a senior specialist forensic pathologist and associate professor at the University of Pretoria from the Department of Forensic Medicine. He has published wild, widely in the fields of electrocution, suicide, and other areas involving the pathology of trauma. His chief mission is in life is to help advance forensic pathology services, both nationally and internationally. Prof. Blumthal has published 39 articles in peer-reviewed journals. He has contributed chapters to six international textbooks. He's currently an NRFC 2 rated scientist. Prof, we welcome you to the stage. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you for having me here. All protocol observed. <clears throat> Firstly, congratulations. It's an honor um, to have you here as doctors. <clears throat> Just remember, you cannot call yourself a doctor until a patient wakes you up in the middle of the night to prescribe a sleeping tablet. <laughs> You're sleeping, you mind your own business, they call you from the ward, you get there, and the patient's asleep. So what do you do? You consider taking the sleeping tablet yourself. <laughs> um, to your parents, loved ones, grandparents, you've given your children the best possible upbringing and education you can possibly have given them. They have now reached physical and mental maturity. They are now an independent functioning unit that can face the difficulties of mature life alone. <laughs> now remember, there's no difference between a bear cub and a human. When a bear cub can fend for itself, out it goes. You now have full permission to kick them out the house. <laughs> anyway, so who am I and on what authority do I speak and why did I get invited today to give this talk? Um, so look, I'm a forensic pathologist. I work in a mortuary. We don't see living humans. Um, we do, however, get to see the big picture from before birth till after death. And we know about death. And by studying death, you actually learn quite a bit about life. So if I may have 15 minutes of your time. So first thing I have to ask you is what, do you, what is success? I mean, how would you know you've arrived? What does it smell like? Is this success, you being here now? So I think the, the good way to look at this is to ask doctors who've just retired, did they have a successful life? And if you ask doctors that have just retired, what do they regret most in life? The main things are not enough time with family and friends, not enough leisure time, some have wanderlust, some have unmet expectations, and some have regret. So it's always good to talk to those that have walked the path before you, that have hacked their way through the jungle, that have climbed the mountain. So let's look at the next 30 years before you retire. You've got 30 years, which is exactly 1,500 weeks. All right. By the way, if you make 80, that is 4,000 weeks. If you make 90, that's um, 4,900 weeks. And if you make 100, that's 5,100 weeks. But I'm just going to focus on the next 1,500 weeks here. Okay, 30 years. First thing I need to tell you is you are the general of your own army. Now within you, you have soldiers. Um, these soldiers are your talents, abilities, and techniques. You've also got traitors within you. These are your anxieties, your egos, immaturities, doubts, procrastinations. Every, armor, every army has its traitors. You're going to have to mobilize these forces strategically into the far country into which you must invade. And that country is the next 30 years time. So you need to have a campaign, you need to have a plan. Now I need to tell you this, this new world we're going into is a totally different world than when we studied. So for example, I used to walk down the corridors with all my books in my suitcase. Now we've got cell phones. Everything's at the touch of a screen. I have just come back from the International Academy of Forensic Sciences. The keynote speaker was introduced on screen by Barack Obama. But this was not Barack Obama. This was not even deep fake. This was deep, 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 deep fake. This fooled 2,000 of the top forensic minds on the planet. Completely. So we've got like deep fakes coming now. The, the, the difference between um, screen and reality has been phased. We no longer in forensics call it a crime scene because a crime scene implies space and time. They now call it the sphere of investigation because a crime can happen six months ago on the other side of the planet with your cell phone. So crime scenes have changed. There's new facial recognition software. There's now ransomware insurance. Laboratories on a chip, and you can kill someone with a cell phone. You can hack medical devices. So now you've got to make, have 
hack-proof medical devices because you can hack an insulin drip and kill someone. So this is the world that you're entering now, totally different from the world that we entered when we were doctors. So, and these are also turbulent times, and you have to be a doctor in turbulent times. So how are we going to address these next 30 years? I think the first thing is you need to know the, the enemy. You need to know what you, what, what's coming now. And the, the only insight I can give you as a mere forensic pathologist, I mean, I'm, I'm no psychiatrist, but we read suicide notes. And after having read hundreds and hundreds of suicide notes, I realized that there's only three themes why people kill themselves. These are work health, work, health, and relationship problems. And I call these the three battlefronts of life. So you're sitting here today because you've conquered the, the work battlefront. But to be totally successful, it's work, health, and relationships. All human stresses can be slotted into these three things, work, health, relationships. Everything from your mother-in-law to your hay fever. Work, health, relationships. Everything, your underlying health, your age, your geography, your public prejudices, your sex life, your gender, your identity, your feelings, your leisure, your society, your religious beliefs, your political beliefs, your clubs, your leisure time, all these can be slotted into work, health, relationships. And in my last 10 minutes over here, I want to just address each battlefront and give you some sagely advice before you go into the next 30 years, if I may. So the first thing I need to talk about is the health battlefront. Here's the mind blow um, like fact for the day. Your health is more important than your patient's health. Your health comes first. Everything that I'm going to tell you today, all my advice will be useless if you work against me by refusing to take care of your own health. You see, you are a locomotive. If you do not give the locomotive fuel, it won't run. But if you run your body beyond the safety limits, it will burn itself out to keep up with your ambitions. It will not whimper or complain for a long time, but eventually it will cripple you in self-defense if you do not listen to its claims. Like a train being examined by an engineer, let a doctor examine you regularly, else you will derail. Life is about maintenance. So your train, you come first. Remember this, number one. Otherwise, the rest of what I'm going to tell you is not worth anything. The next battlefront, relationship battlefront. So as someone's lying on my table, I can tell so much about the person because life leaves signs on the body. Every scar, every needle puncture mark can tell me this person made some choices in life and there's nowhere to hide at autopsy. So you've got to be very careful about you know, your relationship battlefront. If you hang out with the wrong kind of people, they will infect you. Also beware social isolation. You know, if the unlucky and unhappy will infect you. And if you are the cleverest person in the room, you're the wrong room. So you've got to always find wiser, happier, and healthier people in yourselves and infect yourself with them. Beware social isolation. Do not build walls around yourself. Build bridges to other people. And also consider working with like-minded people. You see, we were trained to be these lone wolf doctors. That, those days are over. I've just come back from Australia. They now got practices like associations of four obstetricians working. And they'll tell the patient, listen, I could deliver the baby, or she can deliver the baby, or he can deliver the baby. Because it's now about work-life balance. You, you cannot burn yourself out. You need um, work-life balance. Um, so be of service to your fellow human, but also take care of yourself. And finally, I want to just talk about the work battlefront. So you need to take time to be with family and friends, because the one time you lift your head, they may not be there. You've gone through so many personal sacrifices to become successful. However, you'll be a failure in your other battlefronts, your uh, personal life and your health battlefront. So who are you sharing your success with? It's very lonely at the top of the mountain. You're literally going to be making snowballs for yourself and throwing them to yourself. Eh? So you have to learn from other people's climbs. You have to speak to people that have hacked their way through the forest. There's no glory in not taking a holiday. Take time away. You'll do more damage to yourself, your work, and your relationships by not taking a break. Time away allows you to reflect, to think, to repair, to bond, and to heal. Do not neglect your other battlefronts. Remember, you're only here for your work battlefront. There's two other battlefronts. And then too little work. So, look, when you were young, you were a consumer. Now you're going into the real world. It's the machine of the world which you're going to work on. And then when you retire, you once again become a consumer. So you're going now to work on the machine of the world. And there's going to be leisure time. And people need to realize that the day you get your degree or diploma, people stop learning. I want to tell you that you've got to keep learning your entire life. This is not the end. This is the beginning. Because otherwise your ideas will become stale. 
So you must never stop reading and learning. So this is the beginning. So the next 30 years, the task of living. Your existence needs to be attacked with insight and understanding. You need to attack the earthy problems right here, right now, and be objective. Do not defer your life. Remember, you've got a set amount of time. It's about finitude. And you've got to keep this machine of the world well lubricated and turning. You've got to use your tools and your talents to solve your life and our earthy problems right now. So you've got to adopt a new center of gravity right here in this real world. Why aim for the moon and Mars when we've got serious problems here on Earth? If I met Elon Musk, that's what I would ask him. So even though the world has changed and we've got all this new technology and stuff, the world has not changed. We are still human and our needs are very human. Bronchopneumonia is still bronchopneumonia. TB is still TB and a sleeping tablet in the ward will still work on you. One last thing I need to mention here before I go. If you did medicine for money, power, esteem or prestige, you did it for the wrong reasons. Money, power, esteem and, priv and prestige. These are the most fleeting vanities of all vanities. They will not sustain you. So I know this sounds counterintuitive when I want to tell you here, but you have to lessen your aggressive drive for fame and success because neither fame nor money will carry you through the next 1,500 weeks. You need more. You cannot take your PhD to bed with you on a lonely night. So the next 30 years, this is what I'm going to sum up with here. Number one, you cannot have a pessimistic outlook. You have to be optimistic about the next 30 years. You, you've got to go out there and make a difference. And the best insurance against melancholia, depression, and a sense of futilities as you go forward is the development of wide horizons and the cultivation of mental elasticity and interest in the world. You've got to fill your days with work and recreation, and you've got to fill your nights with enjoyment of social and intellectual activities. The best investment is a wide horizon of interests, emotional vitality, broad social activities, and a career of service to your fellow human. Extend your social, intellectual, and occupational horizons. Keep busy. Many of your worst problems will be the result of too much introspection. Plan your future activities in such a way that there will be a thrill of new interest in your life. Thank you and good luck.